on this episode of Bondi Vet. That trauma comes with a whole lot of psychological issues. Can Kate stop rescue dog Jala from jumping off a four-storey balcony? This could have absolutely ended in severe tragedy. I think he might have jumped on the guinea pig by accident. Will this cherished family pet ever walk again? At the moment, I just don't know how this is all going to end up for sugar. Has he ever collapsed on a walk? He's been pretty close to it and I've had to carry him home. And what's making Sydney so breathless? We need to do something now. We need to perform surgery. You make my world a better place. Come on, there's your girl. Dr Kate is preparing to make an urgent house call after receiving an SOS from a terrified owner. I've just had a call from Lisa and Ben about Jala. Jala's a little rescue dog that they got a couple of months ago and she had a really bad start to life. Since then, they're having trouble with some of Jala's behaviors. So in particular, these guys cannot even leave their house. Jala's separation anxiety has recently become so bad that she tried to leap off a four-storey balcony while her owners were out. When I first heard about Jala's story, I was absolutely shocked. This is not a laughing matter. This could have absolutely ended in severe tragedy. We both had nightmares actually when it happened, like really bad dreams mm. about what potentially could have happened and just reliving like what everyone would have been seeing. Hello. This is Jala. Are you very nervous? Good girl. <laughs> so what happened? Really scary. Ben and I decided to go to the beach. Yeah. We left the sliding door to the balcony slightly open for a bit of air. We were gone for maybe 30 minutes max because we don't like leaving there too long. Got home and there was a post-it note on the front door. Jala had gone out to the balcony and had jumped up over the railing, over onto the planter box, four storeys up, and was pacing, trying to obviously find Ben and I. We're dealing with a really dangerous situation mm. where she potentially could slip, she mm. could jump off that balcony, because yeah. all she wants to do when you guys are not home is get out of here. Yeah. She's like, wants to come and find you. So yeah, lesson learned that she's obviously really freaked out when we're not home. It's really common for rescue dogs in particular to have some psychological issues. These dogs have been through some serious trauma and as soon as they get into their new homes, they become really attached to the family that have taken them on. We got a rescue dog because we felt like they're the dogs that are really in need. We went out and saw her and yeah, just fell in love with her straight away to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, she was left in a pretty horrible situation where her and two other dogs um, would be left for a week at a time while the <gasps> owner would go away oh, wow. for work. No food. She was really underway. Like really malnourished. You could uh -huh. see her ribs, fly bit in the ears. Big chunks taken out of her coat. Yeah, yeah. I see. Yeah. She, she was a bit of a mess. You're very good at this, aren't you? Mm -hmm. So she's got evidence of wear on those mm. front incisors here. And and that's where she has been chewing something, probably out of anxiety. She has worn and ground down those teeth to an abnormal level for what her age is. And that's because she's probably been chewing metal bars, where she's probably been trying to get out of something that she hasn't wanted to be in. So she's worried that basically every time you leave her... And we're yeah. not coming back. And you're not coming back. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. It's so heartbreaking mm. to think, like the look on her face when you shut the door behind her is just... Like, am I going to see you again? Mm -hmm. It's really heartbreaking. Where we need to start with Jala is to teach her that it is okay to be alone. That separation from Lisa and Ben is not a bad thing. When you leave, you guys will have certain things that you do that she starts to associate with your leaving. When I start getting dressed, whether it's um, to go to the gym or to go to work, mm -hmm. you can tell her body language changes immediately. Okay, so sometimes you need to put your gym clothes on and not go to the gym. Yeah, okay. 
With Jala, we're going to start with a three-tiered approach. The first one, we're going to use some medication. We are not going to get anywhere without using medication in Jala. Um, it's not uncommon with rescue dogs. This isn't just Jala. This is 90% of rescue dogs have some level of anxiety. It's just that Jala's is very bad. The second thing we're going to do is use some natural supplements because you know she needs all the help she can get. The third thing we're going to do is leave her with some puzzles. You need to actually start to use her brain. So give her puzzle games and do that when you're home as well as when you're out. Bowls are out. Most of her food should come from some kind of puzzle activity. Wow, okay. Yeah. Okay, so this is a snuffle mat. And what we do with this is we hide all of her food, her meal, in this <laughs> snuffle mat. So we're putting dry food in that? Yeah, you can put dry food in this or you can put little treats. <laughs> but so far, Jala's unimpressed with her new toys. You've got to give her time and patience. You know, she's spent years and years in a really traumatic environment. Jala's hit the jackpot with you too. <laughs> yeah. I know, and they're not going to leave you, okay? Well done, Jala. Enjoy your new toys, take your pills, and I'll see you soon, okay? <laughs> Good girl. Okay, see you later, alligator. Jala has been lucky enough to find this amazing home. These guys are not leaving her, and now what we have to do is get Jala to a point that she can appreciate her new life. Ideally, no kamikaze off the balcony would be great. Yeah, definitely. A few months later, Anjala's separation anxiety is now under control. Since Dr Kate was here, uh, Jala has improved attention to the puzzles specifically. Okay. Jala girl. Ooh. What's in here? Can you find it? Where is it? She's so excited. You can tell like her ears are up and she's all happy, her tail's kind of moving. Where is it? And her high-rise balancing act is a thing of the past. We definitely do not let Jala out on the balcony when we're not here. We keep the doors locked. <coughs> so yeah, it's just great to know that Jala can be herself and be relaxed and not have this kind of tension within her. So she's a happy-go-lucky dog. <laughs> Silly boy took the guinea pigs down to the trampoline and I think he might have jumped on the guinea pig by accident. No, I didn't. A family feud has broken out between Hugo and his little brother, Alfred. Hugo's guinea pig, Sugar, is paralysed after Alfred jumped on her. She just wasn't moving and her legs were just lying on the floor. And I weren't working and so... Mm. That's extra sad because she's such a friendly girl. So this happened all of a sudden? Yeah, because of that troublemaker. What? Alfred? Did you jump on top? Or next to? Next. The bones in these legs actually feel okay, which makes me think that the problem actually isn't in the legs, it's higher up along the spine here. Oh. If it is a spinal cord problem, then it is, it is serious. And so we have to work really hard to give Sugar a, a chance of walking normally again. Yes. What I'd like to do is, is take a quick x-ray. Oh, now yeah, she is in pain. Any type of spinal injury is serious. The big question here is when that spine buckled, how much damage and how much bruising was done to those spinal nerves? If it's been a lot, then Sugar may never walk again. X-ray. Sugar's X-ray results are ready. You look down the, the spinal column here, all the vertebrae are actually in place. It really reinforces my belief, my suspicion, that it has been some sort of compression of the spinal cord around this area, which is then affecting the function of these legs here. It all depends right now how serious that compression was. Right now the damage has been done, we can't do anything about that, but what we can do mm. is try to limit the swelling that will cause more and more damage and more pressure on those nerves. It's just terrible. 
The guinea pig will need a second injection within 48 hours, but there are no guarantees she'll ever walk again. Alfred, this is really important, buddy. Two hands along the side, like that. Oh, OK. OK? Yeah. And she goes in like that. We just can't afford for that spine of hers to bend around. Yeah. Chris is now letting Hugo take sugar home to recuperate. You call me any time you need some help, OK? Mm. Thanks, buddy. Thank, thank you. No worries. It's really good. At the moment, I just don't know how this is all going to end up for sugar. But for Hugo's sake, I really hope it's a happy ending because he loves this guinea pig. And if it doesn't work out, he's never going to forgive his little brother. I'll definitely take care of sugar, especially from him down there. Now, either they're doing some renovations or Alfred's a lot more dangerous than we thought. It's been 48 hours since Sugar the guinea pig was brought into the Bondi clinic with paralysed legs. Oh, oh, wow. This is the scene of the crime where naughty Alfred jumped on her. Is that the trampoline, Alfie? Yes. OK. We were on it. Yeah, I know you were. It's <laughs> Hey, Shooks. The very concerned Hugo has been giving Sugar constant care. We'll get her out. And we'll see how she walks around here. And so we'll just squeeze a little toes here. Yep, so she flinches, that's good. We might just see how she how she walks on them. So we'll just move her forward here. And see she's still dragging them. The problem she's got there is that she's probably not too aware of where her feet are. It's like having dead legs in a way because the messages aren't getting through quick enough. Okay. So she can't put her feet in the right place. The plan for sugar today is to give an injection of anti-inflammatories with the hope being that might free up some space to get those messages down the spinal cord. Okay, little sugars. If this doesn't change, there's not much of a future for sugar. Look, you're doing a really good job. So we'll put it back in. It could be days, even weeks, before I'm going to know if she's ever going to walk again. Ten days later, and Chris makes another house call to check up on Little Sugar. That's my back just to look at him. Alfred obviously hasn't settled down, but has the victim of his boisterous behaviour managed to bounce back? So, Hugo, I mean, she's walking around. Yeah. Yeah, so she's improved, huh? <laughs> Yes, a lot. Hey, look at this. <laughs> Where she goes. And you know what? <laughs> yeah. She's happy to move around. Why? Because of food. All right, the, key, <laughs> the key to rehabilitation has been you, Hugo, and food. This is an incredible recovery considering where she was at before. I mean, she had no movement in those back legs at all. To turn around and do this, I mean, a, a human spinal surgeon would, would marvel over this. So you have to be impressed with how Sugar's gone in difficult circumstances. Sugar may be running around again, but Hugo still hasn't forgiven his little brother. Hit him next time. If he does something to my name, he'd like that again. Hugo deserves to be so happy with what he's managed to achieve with Sugar. But you get the feeling that he's going to be Sugar's protector for a long time. One day your parents are going to tell you about a thing called the 21st birthday, and that's when this is going to be really funny. Yeah? Yeah. And when they play the video, you'll understand. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. No worries. Now, aren't you? All that playing? Just 10 minutes away in St Margaret's, another one of Scott's patients, seven month old Sydney, is turning out to be a very cute puppy with some interesting habits. Sid is a very mischievous dog. His favourite thing is to try and get up the stairs when we leave the stair gate open and go searching for our love interest, which seems to be a big, cuddly penguin in my children's bedroom. Um, he likes some alone time with that penguin. 
We kind of have to leave him to it and uh, rescue the penguin a bit later. But while Sydney's enthusiastic antics make everyone laugh, there is a problem. Come on. Any strenuous activity is now becoming a threat to this French bulldog. Come on then. Just a romp in the park can be dangerous. Whee! Because of Sydney's severely compromised breathing caused by extremely narrow airways. When you look at Sydney, he's such a gorgeous dog. He's so popular locally. Sid! Sydney! What people don't realise is that this dog is beset with problems. All right, Sid. OK, good boy, good boy. Playing with other dogs in the park, I have to pull him away after five minutes because he gets so overexcited, he can't breathe. Come on, then. Good boy. Good boy. Sometimes he gets so bad I have to carry him home because he just can't catch his breath. It's really upsetting to see him getting distressed and we know that he wants to run and play and it really holds him back that he's just not being able to breathe and get the air down. Good boy, Sid. Jo is taking Sydney to see Scott later today and she's hoping there will be a solution to improve her puppy's quality of life. He's part of the family and we'll do anything that we can do to make him better and give him the comfort he needs to, to get out there and enjoy the park. And we really need to get it sorted out quite quickly. Oh, Sydney, you'll be better soon. Come on. where we're going, don't you? Hey. Hi, Jo. Hi. Hi, Scott. Sydney. Hello, mate. How are you? Hey. Oh, you're handsome. He remembers you. Come on in, Jo. Let's have a chat. Brilliant. Thank you. I'm really worried about Sid. He's really struggling with breathing and just generally being a puppy in the park. And we need to get this sorted. Yeah. How's things been going, Jo? Still as snorty as ever, I'm guessing. I'm afraid so, yeah. So just to kind of go through some of the symptoms, he snores. Oh, yeah. When he goes on a walk, does he pant pretty much the whole time? Yeah. Yeah. And does he pant for a long time after he recovers from an exercise as well? He does, and it exhausts him, so he falls asleep. Yeah. Has he ever collapsed on a walk? Like, has he ever got to the point where he's so out of breath that he's gone down? No, but he's been pretty close to it, and I've had to carry him home because he just can't get his breath and can't walk. So he is classic of a lot of flat-faced brachycephalic dogs having this BOAS syndrome, so brachycephalic obstructive airway syndrome. Wow. But basically it means that because he's got a short nose and a big domed head, uh, a lot of the structures in the back of the throat are excessive yeah. and those affect his ability to breathe normally. I mean, it's great that he hasn't yet collapsed, mm -hmm. but certainly that's where we're headed. Uh, and this kind of dog um, can become blue and purple. You know, they literally aren't getting enough oxygen into their system mm -hmm. to be healthy, um, and then they can collapse. And look, worst case scenario, I have heard that they can die. Oh. So it isn't something that we can take lightly, and Sydney's a great dog, and we don't want to get to that point. Seeing Sydney today, it's fairly obvious what we need to do. We need to perform surgery. This isn't fun for him. This isn't a lifestyle that he can endure long term. We need to do something now. And the best option for him is to try and trim the soft palate and make his nostrils a bit bigger. What we're hoping from the surgery is that we're going to have a dog that's going to breathe much easier, yeah. um, is not going to be so stressed out in the summer, uh, and hopefully won't snore as much and give you both a good night's sleep. <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> I couldn't believe that when it, Scott said he needed surgery, I'm just devastated for Sydney, but also at the same time secretly quite pleased that it's actually going to get him sorted out. Joe doesn't want to waste any time, so Sydney's surgery is booked in for tomorrow morning. Hey, mate, we'll sort you out. Yes, we will. Yeah. Scott. Hello, mate. Hiya. Hello, buddy. Hi, hey, buddy. How are you doing? You're all right. Gemma and Emma will both be assisting with the surgery. Neither of these experienced nurses have been involved in a soft palate resection before. So I thought I'd do him a few drawings just so you girls can see what we're going to be doing. The soft palate looks a little bit like this. OK. Gemma, you are going to be my surgical assistant today. All right. What we're going to be doing is I'm going to be putting 
two little sutures called stay sutures in there like that. You're going to be holding them behind my head. Yep. And then I'm going to lock this bit off. Wow. Like that. Okay. Is that all right with you? Is that all right yeah. with you? All right. Let's get to it. Let's do it. This particular syndrome of having the long, soft palate and really tiny nostrils can be life-threatening. Uh, dogs can become cyanotic, which means that they have not enough oxygen getting into their system. They turn blue and, uh, yes, they can die if that happens. Don't. Come on. Certainly, Sydney is a dog that under anaesthetic will be compromised, so we all need to be sure that we know exactly what we're doing, that our roles are defined and that everyone's on their top game. Straight away, look how much wow. that soft palate goes into his larynx. That's incredible. So you can see it's actually hanging inside his voice box there. That's the problem. Soft palates in French bulldogs are always fairly sizable, but Sydney's is, a, is an absolute belter. It is huge. It really is. It looks like a second tongue. Great. OK, let's move him into the surgery and get Go. going. I do need to take quite a bit away from this to make sure I get the results I'm looking for. Right, so I'm just going to place the stay sutures now. It's a delicate operation. And now it's time for Gemma to take up her unusual surgical position. Ready to get close and personal? Yes. <laughs> going to have you. a little hug. I think this is the closest we've ever been. <laughs> I feel right your... there on your ear. I feel like your hot breath on my neck. I feel like it's more like an experience with a vampire or <laughs> something. What are you trying to say? Gemma and I are good mates at work, um, but uh, I don't think we've ever been quite that close. Oh, now all I can think about is your hot <laughs> breath. That's not right, is it, Sydney? <laughs> hey? Sydney, stay with me, buddy. Let's ignore them. <laughs> all right, so we're just about to cut now. Wow. There we go. So once we've trimmed back the soft palate, we have just got two edges that we need to suture together. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That's good. So, Gem, if you unhook there, thank you. Now it's on to stage two of the surgery. Let's embark on that nose job, shall we? Hey? The procedure on the nose is an interesting one because we're taking sections of the nostrils away to actually make the nostrils bigger. But anyone that's ever cut into a nose before will know it bleeds like hell. But very quickly, you can control that just by suturing it into the right position. And straight away, you could see that he had nostrils where he didn't have them before. Well, that's one heck of a nose piercing. The difference from one side to the other. Yeah. yeah. Your sutures have improved. You've been practicing. <laughs> that's amazing, Scotty. That's like, all joking aside, like, I'm actually really impressed with what you've just done. I can see Scotty as a plastic surgeon for humans. Why? The women would love you coming to get their noses done and their lips done and their boobs done. <laughs> you just imagine the consults. It'd be so different from this, you yeah. know, instead of being salivated on and attacked by the leg. It might be actually you would. <laughs> Oh dear, <laughs> you went there, you went there. Oh dear. A lot of our clients like to think um, Scott's a dream boat. So you can just imagine the clientele if he was a plastic surgeon. Women coming in for their lips to be pumped up and things like that. Well, I think it's a bit perfect, isn't it? It's a little bit perfect. He can hang your hand. I know, I know Gemma will say something rude if she doesn't think it is, so come and have a look. Let's have a look. Inspect your work. So we do have to try and keep Scott's ego under control, but we did have to give him praise this time because it was a pretty good job. I think it's pretty perfect. Wow, high praise. I'm scared to say anything about that. <laughs> you should be, go away. <laughs> You're perfect, Sydney. Good job. All right, let's wake this boy up, shall we? Straight away, as a surgeon, you can see and hear that Sydney's snuffling days are over. Do us to call mummy, eh? Sydney will sleep off the anaesthetic for a few hours before going home with Joe. I think we're all super happy with the result. I think in the long run, Sydney is going to be so much happier. We're going to be able to breathe better, we're going to be able just to enjoy life a little bit better. So here's to Sydney and his new nostrils. No, it's going to feel weird, isn't feel it? Feel funny. Mm. Hey 
handle that new nose. It's been four hours since Sydney had his nose job and a large section of his soft palate removed. Come on, big boy. Here we go. Let's go find Mummy. Already, the French bulldog's breathing has improved. Hi! How did it go? Upstairs, owner Jo is just arriving to take her puppy home. Without Sid at home today, it's been really quiet. Quiet in the fact that he's not running around under my feet, but also quiet because he's not been snorting and shuffling and snuffling in the background. Oh, here he comes. It's going to be quite strange going home and him being there and still being silent, but knowing he's nice. there. Oh, my gosh, Sid. Hello. What do you think? Hello, it looks amazing. So the surgery went really well. We trimmed that soft palate, so hopefully he won't be gurgling as much. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, as you can see, he's got some, uh, well, he's got nostrils. <laughs> Didn't Big have them nostrils. before. They're excellent. Yeah, I'm really happy. He's done really well and breathing quite quietly, really, yeah. considering he's still quite sleepy. Yeah, that's excellent. Thanks, Scott. I think Sydney looks amazing. I can't believe the difference already in the nostril size. With all the swelling reducing over the coming days, I think he's going to just get better and better and better. And hopefully then you'll be able to walk in the park, enjoy the great outdoors, even in hot weather, with a dog that isn't making so much of a racket. Well, Sid, I can get you home. You got him. All right, bye, champ. Bye, mate. Bye. Nice nose, by the way. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. <laughs> See, See you, you soon. All the best. All right, take care. Bye. bye. See ya. Bye. Bye, Sid. Say bye. Bye, mate. Bye. You're so cute. And three weeks after performing no surgery on French Bulldog Sydney... Hello, mate. How are you? You're looking fantastic. Hi, Joe. Hi. Scott has organised a date in the park to check up on his handiwork. He looks amazing. Look at that nose. Hey? Oh, what's that sound I hear? The sound of silence. Exactly. <laughs> no snoring. Yeah. When I first met Sydney, he was a noisy dog. I mean, even at rest, he made a racket. But when he was exercising, he would snort, he would snuffle, he would pant. It was all very distressing and far from normal. But now I know the surgery's been a success and he's a happier dog because he's a quieter dog. So how's it been going? Obviously, he's breathing a lot better. Loads better. Um, he's playing with dogs in the park. He's running. Since the operation, he's now enjoying his dog life to the max. And as a family, we can see a different change in him. He's really enjoying himself out and about. You ready? Go on, then. It was a massive bonus for all of us, him and us. Good boy. He's never going to be a beautiful gazelle running <laughs> after, you know, the wildebeest in the park. He's always going to have a, a short run before he's going to be a bit out of breath. At the end of the day, he's a French bulldog. Built like a tank yep. with a flat face. Yep. But you think he's much more comfortable enjoying Absolutely. life. Absolutely. It was the right call to do the operation. That's good, isn't it? That's good to hear. Yeah. Hey. Oh, sick. Oh, you big wuss. <laughs> hey. What a good boy. Did the nose job help with the ladies at all? Huh? <laughs> hey. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek. If you love our show and want to see more amazing stories from the Bondi Vet team, just hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you for our next video.